Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's vlog, I'm going to be doing a what I eat in a day. For those of you who watch my channel, you would know that I am running a marathon in less than two weeks. So at the moment, my nutrition is kind of based around my training. This morning, I'm about to go for a long run. I'm aiming for 30 Ks. So I'll just show you a few things that I'm doing. I used to fast until about 1 or 2 p.m. every single day. But at the moment, I'm not doing that just because I need the extra calories to fuel me for my runs. So in the morning and what I'm actually about to have now before I go for this run is I'll always start with a bulletproof coffee. I'll just have my instant coffee and add a tablespoon of MCT oil and a tablespoon of coconut oil. So I got this MCT oil on iHerb and it's significantly cheaper than um, what you would buy in a health food store. I don't know the brand, but the reviews say it is a good high quality MCT oil. So I'm rolling with that and it is just so much cheaper. With the bulletproof coffee in the morning before a run, I will always take a handful of nuts. And if I'm driving to where I'm starting the run, which is what I'm doing today, I'll just eat them in the car on the way. So I've got about that many. I don't know, that looks like about 15 to 20 almonds, just a handful. And I will always have about three scoops of either peanut butter or almond butter. I'll literally just scoop it out of the jar and I know that's really gross, but I'm the only one using it, so I don't care. And this will genu generally fuel me for most of the run. I have also, just as backup, so in the past when I've done half marathons, I've always kind of mentally relied on those glucose gels. I am running this race off fat, so I am not increasing my carbohydrate intake at all. I'm increasing my calories, so 5% of my daily caloric intake will maybe up my carbohydrate intake by a couple of grams. So. I haven't used them yet, and I also bought these off iHerb, but I bought these MCT chews, and they're kind of just like an emergency refuel during the race. I haven't used them yet, only because I haven't really needed to. As long as I stay hydrated throughout the race, I don't feel like I do need a kick of fat or um, carbohydrates. Like I don't get, I haven't really felt that fatigue. So I'm just going to take these as an emergency. The recommended dose is taking three with water and I will only take it if I really, really need it at the end. I don't love taking processed uh, supplements and things like that. So yeah, just on standby. But my morning routine before a run, I'll always have a bulletproof coffee, um, a couple of scoops of almond butter or peanut butter, and a handful of almonds. And if you do really start to fatigue during the run, you can always buy something like this. A follower actually put me onto these. And yeah, so I'm I don't know I don't know what they're like, but once I try them I will definitely give you a good review. So I'm gonna go for that run. Because it is a longer run and it's a track with no water taps or water stations, I've bought myself one of these camelback uh, backpack things. They're kind of annoying to run with. It's more knowing that something's on your back, but it's very necessary, especially because summer is dragging out in Australia, so it's quite warm at the moment. So dehydration is a huge risk, but I'll see you after my run. Hello, so I'm back for my run. 30 kilometers done. I didn't use the MCT chews. I just held off. So the next time, if I do use them, which I think I might, I might just test to see whether or not they make a difference in my run towards the end as I am starting to fatigue. But for now, I am going for a late lunch. So I'm going out for lunch and I won't be filming, but I'll show you kind of what I get, but I won't be talking through it in the cafe. But for now, because I just burnt so many calories and I don't usually track the calories that I do burn, uh, but I do know after 30 kilometers, I really do need to refuel and I need to refuel on fat. So for now, I'm going to make a keto smoothie. And I think 
this exact recipe of what I'm doing, I think some of you will either love it, hate it, or it will grow on you. When I first started making keto smoothies, I was really reliant on using protein powders for the sweetness, but now I just try and get my flavors and the sweetness for a more uh, natural um, ingredients such as like nuts and I use a bit of almond milk and because this is a moderate protein diet I was finding that if I were having one of these smoothies in the morning that's half my protein gone for the day just from a single scoop of protein powder so now I my taste buds have just adapted to how it is now and yeah see if you like it I'll show you what I do Okay, so just to start, I've got a small handful of ice and the amount of ice that you use is just up to you and how you would like the consistency of your smoothie. I make it into a smoothie bowl, so I like it nice and thick. So to this, I will just add, and I've got some coconut milk here. This lasts a couple of days. Um, I just pour in a small amount into that. A handful of spinach, half an avocado, depending on how hungry I am, some days I have a full avocado, a tablespoon or so of coconut oil, and I add a teaspoon of spirulina. I'm trying to up the dose, but I actually really hate the taste of spirulina. I'm just finishing off the packet and then I'll definitely buy the capsules. I bought this off iHerb and it was significantly cheaper than um, health food stores and the supermarket and things like that. I'll leave the link for iHerb down below in the description box. And yeah, you guys might be able to find some bargains there as well. I like to buy things like nutritional yeast and things like that off there as well because it's just so much cheaper. So to this, I'm just going to add some, I've got some almond milk and coconut milk. So as you can see, I'm just kind of winging the doses. And usually in a, a what I eat in a day video, I'll... Feel free to absolutely copy the ingredients and whatnot, but the measurements and things like that, that is totally specific to you and what your goals are. With this, so I still don't really have as much liquid, you can absolutely add more coconut oil or almond milk, but I'm just gonna add some water. And then to this, I'm gonna add a scoop of almond butter. Just use this little macro one bought it from the supermarket just under a tablespoon Let's put that in and that will give it a natural sweetness pour it into one of these little bowls nice and thick and so once that's poured out into the bowl my favorite thing to do is just to melt some coconut oil and just spoon it on top like drizzle it on top and then pop it in the freezer for a few minutes and it will make like a coconut kind of biscuit on top. Scrape that on top. This isn't the most aesthetically pleasing looking smoothie but it's actually really yum. And I always top everything with some pink rock Himalayan sea salt. And always quite a generous amount. and I'll put that in the freezer. Okay, so it only takes a few minutes for the coconut to harden on top and then it's pretty much good to go. Hi, 
guys, so I didn't end up filming any of my lunch, but I did take a photo of what I ordered, and that is what's in the thumbnail. Uh, but I find it really easy to eat out nowadays if I can just pick my own meal, so build a breakfast essentially, and just go through the sides and extras on a menu and just make my own meal. It's really clean that way, and I know exactly what I'm eating, and it is what I prefer to eat. Nowadays, most cafes will do it for you. You just pick the sides and extras, and they'll just put them together but for this evening because it's still really hot I just got back from the beach it's still really warm in Australia which is amazing for March April I mean <laughs> I can't believe it's already April and so I feel like something fresh and light so I'm gonna make a Buddha bowl I've made these a few times in my my stories on Instagram and I get loads of questions asking what's in them and the recipe they're so easy to make so I'm just gonna whip one up for you now they're really quick and really easy, so enjoy. So just to begin, I want to preheat the oven fan force to about 180 degrees. Okay, so just to begin, I'm going to apologize about the quality. My iPhone screwed up the angle and whatever. So to start, you just need to prepare some tofu. So a firm tofu is the best tofu because it doesn't fall apart as you stir fry it. So just cube it up however you wish to do. And then once you've cubed it, prepare a baking tray with some baking paper, put it on the baking paper and pop it in the oven for about 10 to 20 minutes. Next, cut off the florist of the cauliflower and however much you want to use. And same with some broccoli. Once you've done this, put the cauliflower and broccoli in a food processor and mix it up so it becomes like a mash type puree rice kind of consistency. Next, get some vegetables of your choice. So I've got Brussels sprouts here. Make sure you give them a good wash before you use them. Same with all of the other vegetables. Cut them however you wish. The smaller the better because we're going to saute them. Next, we've got some asparagus, so just cut this up as well. And we've got some green beans, so just top and tail them, make sure they've also had a good wash. And I've decided to use some more broccoli, so I've just got a tiny bit more cut into small pieces. And just be careful of calculating your macros uh, with how many vegetables and which vegetables you use. And last but not least, I've just cut up some mushrooms as well, and this all fits my macros. So pop the vegetables aside, and on a low heat, heat up a saucepan with a generous amount of coconut oil. Crush some garlic into the coconut oil, and let that fry for a little while, just to kind of heat up and get the flavors going. Firstly, you're going to add the Brussels sprouts because they generally take a little bit longer to soften as you saute them and then add the rest of the vegetables and let them soften. Give it a good stir. Don't forget the tofu, you must check on it halfway through as well. Add the puree mash. Add some coriander seeds, some chili, just for flavor. Give it a good stir. And don't forget to check on the tofu because it can burn quite easily. So once that's done, pour it in, give it a good mix, and this is your Buddha bowl. Once it's ready to serve, and it should serve about three people, I'd add some olive oil just to get the fats up and to make it a little bit more moist. So I hope you enjoyed, and here is the green Buddha tofu bowl. You can't really see it, but I'll post some pictures of it and it was just shown then. But what I'd like to add to this is just some nutritional yeast. So it's a really good source of B12. Um, I'll just give you a little look. I also got this from iHerb. Again, really cheap. And I just sprinkle, the serving size is actually quite big. So I think it's like two level tablespoons is one serving size. So I just sprinkle that on top and it's an awesome substitute for cheese. So this is kind of helping me with my cheese addiction, I guess you could say. And of course, some pink rock sea salt, pink rock salt, sorry. Generous amount of that on top. And there we have it, 
dinner. So I hope you enjoyed today's what I eat in a day vlog. After dinner, I will have a fat bomb, so two tablespoons of coconut oil with a little bit of nut butter frozen in the freezer. But this is really satisfying, really filling, and the fat bomb is amazing if you do get that after dinner sugar craving. It'll kill it straight away. And if you're wondering, and you're probably not, this bikini top is Zafer, I think you say. I'll leave the information in the description box. And yeah, I will also keep you updated with my marathon training. I'll do a specific vlog dedicated to my nutrition and my training. So that'll be in depth for the runners out there, the endurance athletes who want to start training on the ketogenic diet. So far, it's been amazing for me and it is the answer to uh, endurance, I would say. But again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.